Ever found yourself reaching for a snack when you're not even hungry? You might be an emotional eater. Emotional eating is a fascinating and complex phenomenon. It's not about eating because your body needs fuel, but rather, it's about using food as a way to handle feelings. Imagine this. You've had a stressful day at work, you're feeling overwhelmed, and the next thing you know, you're in the kitchen, rummaging through the fridge. Or perhaps you're feeling bored, a little bit melancholy, and suddenly, a tub of ice cream seems like the perfect company. The food isn't really satisfying a physical hunger but an emotional one. You're trying to suppress or soothe those uncomfortable feelings with food. It's a common coping mechanism, but not a particularly healthy one. So if you often find yourself eating for reasons other than hunger, you might be dealing with emotional eating. But why does emotional eating happen? It's not just about the love of food. You see, emotional eating is often a response to negative emotions. Stress, anxiety, sadness, even boredom can all trigger this type of behavior. It's like we're trying to fill an emotional void with food. Here's where it gets interesting. When we eat, our brain releases chemicals that make us feel good. These chemicals are especially potent when we consume foods high in sugar and fat. It's like a natural high that our body craves. Over time, this can lead to us associating food with comfort. Think of it like this. Imagine you're having a rough day. You reach for that tub of ice cream or bag of chips and for a moment you feel better. That's the cycle of emotional eating and it's a tough one to break. So, it's not about the food, it's about how the food makes you feel. Overcoming emotional eating isn't about dieting or self-deprivation. It's about listening to your body. It's about understanding what your body really needs when you're feeling emotional. One of the best ways to do this is through mindful eating. This is the practice of paying full attention to the experience of eating and drinking both inside and outside the body. It involves noticing the colors, smells, flavors, and textures of your food, chewing slowly, getting rid of distractions, and learning to cope with guilt and anxiety about food. Another strategy is to find healthier ways to deal with your emotions. This could be going for a walk, reading a book, or even talking to a friend. It's about finding what works best for you and remember, it's okay to seek professional help. Therapists and dietitians can provide you with tools and strategies to help you navigate this journey. Lastly, try not to keep trigger foods in the house. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Remember, overcoming emotional eating is a journey, not a destination. Be patient with yourself and celebrate your progress along the way.